Hi, this is Andy Hoffman, Media Director for Miles Franklin Precious Metals in our 25th year in business. It's early morning on Thursday, August 21st, and this week's audio blog is titled The Return of the Truth, which is quite apropos given the anti-truth that will be tomorrow's uh, Jackson Hole Symposium speeches. Someday soon, perhaps much sooner than most can imagine, the lost concept of truth will return to mass consciousness. Not that many will be able to act on this information, either due to a lack of means or because the protection ship will have sailed. However, history's most concentrated confluence of financial, information, and perception engineering, as Jim Sinclair would call it, MOPE, fortunately has the fatal flaw of being unsustainable. And thus, when the return of the truth arrives, it will do so with a vengeance. Until a few months ago, I had never heard the word meme which Wikipedia defines as an idea, behavior, or style that spreads from person to person within a culture. In other words, a modern spin on the 17th century term zeitgeist, referring to the spirit of the time. Often, memes take decades or even centuries to change. However, on certain topics, they can change within a matter of years or even months. And never before have we seen so much flux in groupthink in large part due to the power that bees unprecedented efforts to influence it on a global basis. One day, the economy is collapsing, but a day later, care of swarming PPT buying, cartel naked shorting, and Fed managing, the economy's well. And one day, we're going to World War III, but the next day, care of the same swarming PPT buying, cartel naked shorting, and Fed managing, the situation magically de-escalates. This is all fine and good in the land of make-believe, where the 1% reside with their free Fed printed money, but not the real world of the 99% where debt, inflation, unrest, and general mistrust have never been more pervasive. And oh yeah, the physical precious metal markets, which can only defy the forces of economic nature for so long, before eventually erupting to permanent, dramatically higher levels. All one has to do is note the 90% decline in Shanghai silver inventories since April 2013's vicious paper raids to realize equilibrium prices are, far, are likely far higher than the $20 per ounce line in the sand, or as I call it, battlefield $20 silver, the cartel has long defended. Let alone last year's record physical gold and silver man, demand amidst dramatic paper price declines. There are literally a dozen such false memes I could speak of in this week's audio blog alone, as the proverbial holes in the dike of perception manipulation are multiplying that rapidly. Thus, I'll just speak of the top propaganda theme since last week's audio blog, just seven days ago. And where better to start than that of de-escalation, as evidenced by last week's second Sixth Sigma geopolitical crisis in the Ukraine. As I wrote in Friday's Day of Manipulative Infamy, everything about the so-called convoy attack was fishy, in many ways mirroring exactly the accusation refutations and trading action following last month's MH17 attack. Unlike the so-called convoy attack, MH17 did in fact happen. However, the coincidence of pre- and post-event trading, as initially discussed in a post-MH17 uh, article of that same name, that is coincidence, was uncanny. And thus, without averring any opinion of our personal opinion of what happened, we simply invite you to view the egregiously manipulative evidence. As for the economy... Even I am in awe of the ceaseless efforts to propagandize a recovery that not only doesn't exist, but in reality is its polar opposite. Global economic activity is in free fall, as evidenced by this morning's news that manufacturing mining bellwether Caterpillar just posted its 20th straight quarter of declining revenues, or the nearly uh, equally disappointing Eurozone PMI manufacturing index depicting an entire continent in recession or last week's negative 6.8% Japanese GDP print, replete with 32-year high in its CPI. And now that the yen appears on the verge of finally breaking massive support and collapsing, with the miserable failure of Abenomics nearing its end and likely to be re-upped at year-end, the likelihood that Japan will indeed be the first first-world nation to experience 21st century hyperinflation is dramatically increasing. With the ECB on the verge of announcing its own trillion dollar QE program, and China clearly having launched its own more covert version via its new pledged supplementary lending program, 
All that's left is for the world's leading propagandists and market manipulators, the Fed, to follow suit. Which brings me to tomorrow morning's deafeningly hyped Jackson Hole speeches by Janet Yellen and Mario Draghi, in the morning and afternoon, respectively. Or as I call it in yesterday's Tuesday's article, the Jackson Black Hole. But first, let's go back to yesterday's FOMC minutes of their July 30th meeting. You know, when Whirlybird Janet led an extremely dovish statement proclaiming a significant underutilization of labor resources, which, by the way, was the title of my subsequent article. I've long written how the FOMC Minutes publication was completely ignored until it became an economic propaganda tool and precious metals key attack event after gold peaked and America nearly imploded in 2011. Why anyone would care what was discussed at a meeting last month which not only was followed by a press conference, but weeks of speeches by Fed governors is beyond me. Let alone why anyone would believe that many Fed, quote, many Fed officials said job gains might bring rate rise sooner, while publishing a statement highlighting said significant underutilization of labor resources is beyond me. Let alone when just days after the days later the punk July NFP report was released. Frankly, I believe said minutes are simply fabricated to support whatever market interventions are required on the date of publication, such as pushing rates higher when they are near 12-month lows despite the so-called recovery they, insist they incessantly trumpet, which is exactly what, ha what they attempted yesterday. However, the only problem is that barely 12 hours later, following supposedly bullish jobless claims and PMI diffusion index data, from the Island of Lies, that is government economic data publication. Actually, you got to see the Philly Fed number, which went to like two-year highs until you look at the numbers and realize that all of the major components were down except hope. That was up, so that's why we're expected to believe the economy is better. Anyway, after all of this supposedly bullish data, rates are significantly lower this morning than they were before yesterday's minutes publication threatening to again plunge below the key round number of 2.4%. Yes, gold and silver were slammed at all the key attack times, starting with the, uh, with the minutes publication, which is, of course, at the 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, crybaby attack time. And then, of course, 2.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the 8.20 open to the comics, and 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know, the physical fix. What else is new? However, trading this far below the cost of production with perhaps their most powerfully bullish fundamentals of our lifetimes, we have little fear of significant downside, as opposed to the powerful fear of not owning ounces when history's largest Ponzi scheme inevitably implodes. In yesterday's Deflation Fallacies article, I highlighted the unfathomable, prop unfathomable propaganda in the U.S., Europe, and Japan, the home of the world's most expensive cities, of how unfettered money printing is justified by deflation, when in fact it cannot exist amidst a fiat currency Ponzi scheme. Not a single nation on earth is experiencing a reduced cost of living, particularly for need versus want items like food, energy, insurance, and health care. Heck, people are even spending less on need items themselves, as evidenced by the extremely weak sales performance of the world's largest retail Walmart and the world's largest fast food operator, McDonald's. Amazing. Amazingly, every Fed data point suggests the, quote, inflation rate is currently 1.9%, or just below the 2.0% threshold they created last year, as a milestone at which they would raise rates. Anyone that believes the U.S. cost of living is up just 1.9% is either in denial or has an agenda. But irrespective, just like the 6.5% unemployment rate milestone the Fed created and ceremoniously disbanded, as ironically, today's unemployment rate is 6.2%, but the Fed bemoans a significant underutilization of labor resources, said 2.0% inflation milestone, too, will eventually be eliminated. The reason, of course, is that fiat Ponzi schemes require unending money printing, while the lar world's largest and rapidly expanding debt edifice cannot handle even slightly higher rates, let alone normalized rates near historic averages, let alone, at the higher levels, unprecedented debt inflation and global geopolitical tensions would demand in freely traded markets. And thus, as the world prepares for the non-event that Jackson Hole will likely be, unless, of course, it's unexpectedly more dovish than anticipated, we remind you 
that no fiat currency system has ever survived. With today's, uh, with today's emanating so many signs of imminent failure, like the palpable fear we discussed in today's article, it is difficult to imagine something cataclysmic being avoided in the coming months. Consequently, we cannot be more vehement in our belief that this is your last chance at financial survival. And for those taking the initiative to protect themselves with pre physical precious metals, we hope you'll call Miles Franklin at 800-822-8080 and give us a chance to earn your business. Don't forget, we publish, in my view, the industry's best daily economic and precious metals newsletter, and we do it for free. Between myself, David Sheckman, and Bill Holter, you will learn more about what's really going on in the world than anywhere else I can comprehend. Not to mention the three to five podcasts we tape each week, which are also available for free in real time at milesfranklin.com. As for Miles Franklin itself, our 25 years of experience should comfort you that not only will our prices be competitive, but our service the industry's best. Moreover, we operate what I believe to be the industry's best international storage program with Brink Security in Montreal, Canada. And as always, you can contact me with any questions you might have at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. Thanks and have a great weekend.